Hi, welcome back. This is session number eight of Modernize application with Azure on Kubernetes. In this session, we'll explore more in depth what are Kubernetes services and why we might need to use Kubernetes ingress controllers. Then we will explain ingress components and review the current architecture state and the changes after introducing things such as ingress. Finally, we'll jump into the demo. If you want to see more videos like this, I would like to remind you to support my channel. Please just subscribe to it by hitting the button below. In the previous session, we built a Docker image of the product's API and run it in a container. Then we deployed it on AKS as a pod in a deployment. If you wanted to scale our application, we increased the number of the pods. We created a service to make the API accessible. Now, anytime traffic comes in to our API pods, it will pass through the first through the service itself. And if we have several pods, it takes care of splitting the traffic between them. The service can have several types. Cluster IP makes it accessible only from inside the cluster. To make the API accessible from outside world, we can create the service as a load balancer. Kubernetes will send a request to Azure to provision a load balancer with a public IP. Now, it's difficult to memorize the IP address. So instead, we gave it a friendly name and we configured the DNS to point to that IP. The API now can be reached outside, from outside the cluster through the URL productstore.com slash API slash products. Over time, our application will grow and we are expanding the business to other continents. Our customers want to create their own dashboards and reporting tools so they can better understand their end users. So we created two other APIs. The customer's is orders API and the customer's API and deployed it to the same cluster. To expose it now to the outside world, we created those type the services of type load balancer. Azure now will provision the public IPs and configure the load balancer with the necessary rules to forward traffic from the external IPs to the corresponding services. We also want to configure the DNS names to point to the, those IPs so our customers will use those friendly names rather than consuming the IPs directly. The same procedure will be repeated for each app or API that needs an external access. And this comes at extra cost, since public IPs are not free. Also, there is a certain, there is certain limitation on the number of front and IPs an Azure load balancer can accept. And when exhausted, another load balancer is provisioned to handle additional IPs for our Kubernetes services. This becomes more difficult to configure and manage as our application scales. Another technical restriction in Azure, the standard Azure Low Balancer does not, is not able to do SSL termination. So if you are going to run just a few services, then Load Balancer might be a good solution. However, for more complex deployment, the best option is to use Kubernetes Ingress. Ingress is defined as an API object that manages external access to the servers inside the cluster. It's just another manifest file that we deploy to Kubernetes as Layer 7 Load Balancer, which will allow customers to access the application or API through a single URL, which we can configure to have different routes to different services inside the cluster based on the URL routes and at the same time implement SSL termination. Now let's get a closer look on Ingress. So what is Ingress? Ingress has two main components. The first component is Ingress resource. The Ingress resource represents the configured routing rules that will govern how the services are accessed from outside the cluster. The ingress resource is a Kubernetes object of kind ingress, 
another YAML file that we can deploy to our to our uh, cluster and con contains the host and different paths and routing rules. Now, in order for the ingress resource to work, the cluster must have an ingress controller running. An ingress controller is responsible for fulfilling the ingress. It reads the ingress resource information and process the data accordingly. Think of it as just another piece of software that provides reverse proxy, configurable traffic routing, and TLS termination. But Kubernetes does not have a controller. Instead of building this capability, it relies on existing controllers provided by other vendors. So we need to choose the ingress control implementation that is the best fit for our cluster and our application. And there are several options that is available for us. One of them is AKS Application Gateway Ingress Controller, which is an ingress controller that enables ingress to AKS cluster using Azure, Azure Application Gateway. Nginx Ingress Controller for Kubernetes is another option. Ambassador, Ambassador API Gateway is another option. And we have also SDU. This is the current architecture state of the application from session, from session 6 and session 7. If you haven't watched those sessions, please, I advise you to go and visit them so you can get better understanding. Now, since we will expose our app through the ingress, the public IPs for our services are no longer needed. So we will change the services from load balancer type to cluster IP. Nginx Ingress Controller is deployed as any other deployment in Kubernetes. In this case, the pod will have Nginx Ingress Controller image and the Nginx Ingress Controller is, is exposed to the public through the service host type load balancer. In this way, it can acquire its own public IP. Then we need an Ingress resource that we will route all requests to the front end service. The controller now can watch and implement the Kubernetes ingress resource by creating the required inputs. Now all the traffic that comes in will hit one single public IP or DNS name once we configure it and then it will go through the Nginx ingress controller which forward the traffic to the front end application and then the front end application internally through the cluster will hit the back end to retrieve the data. Now, let's get into the demo. In this demo, we'll show you how to create an ingress controller by using Helm. We'll reconfigure the application manifest file to change the services from type load balancer to cluster IP. And then we'll deploy the application using Helm and we'll create the ingress resource by creating the recessive routing tools to forward the traffic accordingly. I am now on my Azure portal and I'm using Azure Cloud Shell. I have already cloned the repo session 8 underscore ingress for the session and you can find all the all the branches for all, each one of the session under the branches under this uh, GitHub uh, repo K8 product store. Now the first step is we need to connect to uh, Azure Kubernetes cluster so I'm gonna use the AZ AKS get the credentials uh, command. I'm now connected to Azure cluster. The next thing I want to do to start like before downloading the, uh, the Helm chart that we're going to use is uh, configuring the Helm repo to use the stable repository by running the Helm repo at stable command. So now we have added this, this stable repo. The next thing is uh, we're going to use and install Nginx ingress controller so nginx is a part of the stable helm repository that we have already configured so i'm gonna use helm install ingress and uh, the uh, install the stable version of nginx Helm will install Nginx for me now, and this is the output. It's saying that it is deployed, and this is the first revision. 
So if we clear this and list zero leases, we will have ingress installed to the default namespace. Of course, we could have installed it uh, to another namespace, which is recommended so you can play it, uh, your services. Uh, so by now, for simplicity, I'm gonna stick with this kind of configuration. Now let's see what uh, let's see if uh, nginx controller was installed. Uh, and I'm gonna use kubectl get ports. So I have two ports here. As you see, it deploys nginx and controller deployed one port for nginx ingress controller and another one for uh, the, for the back end. And as the back end is actually used when a route is not found and will display kind of for or for or, or, or. Uh, let's see now uh Quebec TL you see the services and uh, there are two services the back end which is for this one here which use cluster IP and this is nginx controller use uh, like it's always it's used load balancer with external IP and if you browse to this IP right now we can see that default back in 404 this is what is back end a port used for so whenever there's no routes we didn't configure uh, the kubernetes resource yet so this is a uh, kind of behavior that provided us by default so now i have nginx controller installed i have its ports and its services and now it's time to go back to our application and change some configuration so what we're gonna do here is uh, we already have this helmet chart from the previous session in KD product store this is the helmet chart and this is the values that get injected inside those template what I've did here I changes the two services the back end and the front end from from a low balancer IP to, to cluster IP since we'll be accessing this through ingress controller IP so these have been changed here now I can I need to install the application I can install it using helm oh, first of all I need to navigate to the folder which is helm and then um, helm install I uh, will call the release product store and uh, we'll give it the helm chart So great, uh, I can list uh, the home leases and I can find the first one, the ingress, with the property and so forth, the control and the product store. Now if I uh, list, if I list uh, all the services, I can see uh, the backend API and the UI service, which is for com our components, application components, have been installed or deployed with a cluster IP. We can't no longer access them through this IP because this is can be only be accessed from inside the cluster. Now the missing step is uh, the routes uh, or the rules that Nginx Ingress Controller is going to use to kind of um, know where it can route the traffic when it hits this IP. So the Nginx in uh, Ingress Resource you can find it in the K8 uh, folder. This is the front end uh, ingress resource YAML file, and if you see here, this contains the uh, ingress rules which specify the host. This is the host name that we're gonna hit, and the list of the passes. Uh, this is the back end which this indicates what uh, service you're gonna hit. This is hitting the our front application, the UI service on this port, uh, port 80. And if you see here, this is kind of the host name. And we're using here nip.io, which is a free service that provides wildcard DNS. We're gonna use it to demonstrate to demonstrate accessing the ingress via hostname instead of IP. So what I need to do here is replace this uh, uh, this with my public IP of the ingress controller, which is this one. Now I will save this. And I'm ready to uh, apply this configuration. So 
called front end. Yes. Okay, the ingress controller, uh, ingress resource was configured. And what I can do now is I can use this IP or this host name and browse this application. If I hit this again, it's not configured yet, so I need to hit the host name. And I can uh, hit the front end or the service UI of my application. And when I get the products, it should be getting the products from the other uh, products API. So we demonstrated in this session how we can uh, um, deploy an ingress controller, how we, how we change the configuration of our application uh, from low balance to cluster IP. And we also show you how would you apply ingress controller uh, routes. So in a way that your ingress controller will pick up those routes and start forwarding the traffic in our example to the UI, which is a front end application. That's it for the session. Please don't forget to subscribe and like uh, the video. And see you in the next session. Thanks.